The Kraft Foods Company presents Willard Waterman as the Great Gildersleeve. The Great Gildersleeve is brought to you, partially transcribed, by the Kraft Foods Company. Kraft, makers of wonderful Kraft Deluxe Slices. Perfect slices of delicious pasteurized processed cheese. Kraft Deluxe Slices are made an exclusive way to give you more wonderful flavor in every sandwich size slice. Enjoy them often. Kraft Deluxe Slices, another product you can depend on for quality because it's made by Kraft. Well, it's mid-June, the time of year when most school teachers, including the great Gildersleeve's girlfriend, Miss Tuttle, are a little weary from gathering up the loose ends of young America's education. But it's difficult for Gildersleeve to understand why this shouldn't be a big evening. They've been to a movie, and it's only 10 o'clock. Well, Grace, what'll we do now? Go home. But the evening is young and balmy. And so am I. <laughs> uh, let's go home, balmy. <laughs> There's a big moon up there. We shouldn't let it go to waste. Now, Throckmorton, you promised to take me home immediately after the show. I told you I have a lot of examination papers to grade. Can't you put that off? Well, no. School's out this week. For me, it's out tonight. <laughs> Silly. Shall we stroll through the park before you go in? Mm, I don't think that's a good idea. Oh? It takes too long to get you out of the park. Well, that's because I like to commune with nature. Nothing like sitting in the park listening to the frogs. Well, take me to the door, then you go back and listen. <laughs> no. Hey, how about me coming in and helping you grade papers? No, I'm afraid they're my worry. Speaking of worries, how's Leroy doing? Oh, Leroy's improved a lot this year. Yeah, I know, but will he pass? I think so. Great! Well, here we are. Uh, oh, let me get my key. Uh, 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 one more question, teacher. Yes? Where does Throckmorton stand? Oh, you'll pass. Well, am I smart enough to rate a kiss? You flunk there. <laughs> Good night. She didn't have to put the dunce cap on me. Well, you studied, didn't you? Yeah, I studied. I guess I just had the radio on too loud. Oh, Leroy. Do you suppose I could keep this report card for Monk so they'll lose it? That didn't work last year. Remember, you put down the window ledge for the wind to blow away and your uncle caught it? Yeah, I'm sunk. I'm at the awkward age. Too young to join the Navy and too dumb to pass. <laughs> Leroy, you don't know you didn't pay it. I couldn't have passed. I watched Miss Tuttle when she was grading one of my papers and she just shook her head. Well, she could have had a headache. I'll bet she did. Boy, if I was you, I'd open that envelope and get it over with. You open it, Bertie. Okay. No use keeping you miserable till Miss Gilsey comes. Well, I gotta sit down, Bertie. I can't take it standing up. Darn teachers. Okay. Now, let me see what it says here. It says, Leroy Forrester is promoted to... Promoted? The... I passed. What do you know? I passed. <laughs> you sure did. Yeah, I must be a genius. <laughs> Don't you want to know what your grades are? Oh, the heck with the grades. They're not important. I passed. No doubt about that. It's signed by Miss Tuttle. Miss Tuttle's a swell teacher. I sure think a lot of her. <laughs> Especially since she passed. Huh, Leroy? Well, I've always liked her. I just don't show my feelings. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to do 
something real nice for Miss Tuttle. I don't blame you. I'm going to get her a nice present. That's a good idea, because if anybody deserves a present, it's a teacher who's been worrying all year with a room full of children. <laughs> yeah. What can I get her, Bertie? You might give us some clone or a box of candy like your uncle does. No, I want to get out of that corny class. <laughs> I want to get something real swell for a true friend, one who stuck by me. What do you suppose she'd like? Well, I heard Mr. Gilsey say he was going to give her a traveling case for her birthday next month. Yeah? Well, why wait until next month? Why don't I give her one now? Levi, they're expensive. How much? I saw some in the Hogan Brothers window on sale for around about $10. Ten dollars, huh? And I know your uncle wouldn't want you to spend that much. What the heck? It's my money. I'll go under the house and get it out of my savings. Leroy, Mr. Gilsey might put his foot down. Well, he doesn't have to know about it. It'll be our secret. Who's secret? Uh Uh-oh. Hi, Unc. Hello, Leroy. Bertie, what's the secret? Oh, Mr. Gilsey, you usually come in the front door. Yeah, what's the secret? Unc, I passed. What? I got my report card. Look, I'm promoted. Yeah. Ain't that nice, Mr. Gilsey? Wonderful. Last night, Miss Tuttle hinted you might. Yeah? She's swell. Congratulations, my boy. Now, what's the secret? What secret? Oh, for Bertie. Yes? What's the secret around here? You're not letting me in on something. If we told you the secret, it wouldn't be a secret. Well? If we told you, everybody would know the secret, it wouldn't be a secret. Yes, but... Miss Gilsey, you know when a secret ain't a secret? Yes, Bertie. That's right, a secret ain't a secret, and everybody knows it's a secret! <laughs> Boy, this sure is a neat case. Hope Miss Tuttle likes it. I didn't know what color to get, but how can I go wrong with a loud plaid? Let's see. I'll, I'll ring her doorbell, hand her the package, and say, Miss Tuttle, this is to show my appreciation for... Well, it's to show my appreciation. You're an all right teacher. Nah, that's not a good enough speech to go with a $10 traveling case. I'll have to think of something else. Oh, here comes Marvin, the little worry wart. Leroy! Hi, Marvin. I don't want him to know I'm giving my teacher a present. Where are you going? Just down the street. What's in the package? Nothing. Where are you taking it? Down the street. Why are you taking it down the street? Because I want to take it down the street. I'm going to follow you and find out. Beat it, tag along. It sure is a sissy-looking package. I'll beat it, will you? Did you tie that pink bow with your itty-bitty fingers? They did that at the department store. I bet you got a girl. I have not. Leroy's got a girl. Leroy's got a girl. Martha, you better shut up now. You won't do anything. You can't catch me. Oh, yeah? You can't run with that sissy package. That's what you think. What do I tell the kids? Leroy's got a girl. Leroy's got a girl. It isn't for any girl. It's for Miss Tuttle. Your teacher? I mean, I'll beat it, Marvin. You're taking a present to your teacher? Boy, are you stupid. (laughs) What do you mean, stupid? The grades have been given out. You're too late, stupid. I'm not doing it for any reason. You're still stupid. I gave my teacher a present once. And boy, that was stupid. Yeah? She picked me up and hugged me. She even kissed me. She kissed you? Yeah. Did I feel stupid? Well, this is her apartment, Marvin. Now beat it. I'm going to watch you give it to her. I'll go home and tell your mother she wants you. She doesn't want me. She told me to get out of the house. I'm a pest. (laughs) I know you're a pest. Scram, beat it. And if you tell anybody I'm giving my teacher a present, I'll crown you. I won't tell anybody. If you let me watch, I'll bet she kisses you. (laughs) Well... I think I'll just leave it on the doorstep and ring the bell and beat it. Now you're getting smart. Well, that's wrong, stupid. Hello, Mr. Peavy. Hmm, hello, Miss Tuttle. What can I do for you today? I'd like a bottle of suntan lotion. Very well. We have quite a variety. So I see. We have the regular suntan lotion, and here's a new brand that's becoming quite popular. Oh? 
Rub it on, and it gives you a tan without going out in the sun. <laughs> I suspect it has a little coloring in it. I'll take the regular lotion, Mr. Peavy. I have plenty of time to get a tan this summer. Very well. Planning to take it easy, are you? I don't want to do anything except relax. I can hardly wait until school closes. <laughs> you don't say. Every year seems to become more hectic. And by June, we teachers are getting a little frayed around the edges. Well, it doesn't show on you, Miss Tuttle. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Peavy. If I'd had a teacher as pretty as you, I doubt if I'd ever wanted to leave school. <laughs> You're very sweet. Mm, thank you. You know, Mr. Peavy, sometimes I wonder if I ever want to teach again. How's that? Well, I've been thinking about it a lot. I don't want to round up little wild Indian stage school plays and grade examination papers all my life. Well, I don't know of a more worthwhile profession than teaching. Well, maybe I'm just tired, but as the kids say, I'm about ready to blow the joint. <laughs> my, my. What field would you enter? Mr. Peavy, what's wrong with being a housewife? Well... Except that I don't have a house and I'm not a wife. Well, that shouldn't be any problem for you, Miss Tuttle. I happen to know that you're highly rated among the eligible bachelors in town. Well, there's Mr. Gildersleeve. He's been awfully nice to me. You know what he did? (laughs) There's no telling. Well, we were window shopping last week, and I happened to notice a beautiful traveling case. This morning, I found it on my doorstep. Is that so? There was no note attached, no name. It was a completely noble, unselfish gesture. Yeah, that doesn't sound like Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> you know him well, Mr. Peavy. He must be a wonderful man. Yes, I know him. A girl could do much worse. Mm, could be. Maybe I've let my schoolwork stand in the way of my real future. Mr. Peavy, do you mind if I confide in you? No, not at all. I don't think Mrs. Peavy would either. Well, I I know Throckmorton's fond of me. Oh, my, yes. He never commits himself. Now, what does a girl do with a man like that? Well, you might give him a little push. That's what Mrs. Peavy had to do with me. Really? Push me right into church. (laughs) Well, that's something to think about. You better think fast. Oh, Hello, Peavy. Hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. And Grace. Hello, Throckmorton. It's nice to see you. Well, it's nice to see you, too. You look lovely in that summery dress. Thank you. You won't need much of a push. (laughs) Doing a little shopping with our druggist here? Oh, I uh, bought some lotion to help me get a tan. I plan to do a lot of sunbathing this summer. Nice. I just want to relax for weeks and weeks. Yeah, I know exactly how you feel. Peavy, give me a bottle of suntan lotion. Mm, Very well. I'd better give you the large economy size. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Throckmorton, can you come up to my apartment for dinner tonight? For dinner? Say, I'd be delighted. What have I done to deserve this? Well, it's just a small way of thanking you for the wonderful gift. Gift? Oh, now, don't pretend you didn't leave it on my doorstep. Was there something on your doorstep? Throckmorton, you're such a tease. I'll see you about six. Oh, fine. I'll be there. (laughs) Thank you very much, Grace. Bye now. Bye. Bye, Mr. Peavy. Goodbye, Miss Tuttle. Call again. What do you think of that, Peavy? I come in here and a pretty girl invites me to dinner for no reason at all. (laughs) No, no, I wouldn't say that. (laughs) Great Gildersleeve will be back in just a minute. For quick cheese sandwiches, for easy cheese sandwiches, for delicious cheese sandwiches, get Kraft Deluxe Slices. With Kraft Deluxe Slices, you have perfect slices of wonderfully delicious pasteurized processed cheese, and you don't have to touch a knife. Just open the package and peel those slices apart as easily as you'd peel a banana. Kraft Deluxe Slices are completely different from any other cheese in slices you can buy. That's because they're made a way that only Kraft can make them. Instead of being cut from a loaf, Kraft Deluxe Slices are formed in slices by an amazing new Kraft invention that makes Kraft Deluxe Slices better three important ways. First, Kraft Deluxe Slices are absolutely perfect slices with no ragged edges. 
Second, Kraft Deluxe slices keep fresh longer because no knife ever roughs up their surfaces. And third, Kraft Deluxe slices have more flavor, are more delicious than any pasteurized processed cheese you've ever tasted before. Every neat package of Kraft Deluxe slices holds eight big sandwich-sized slices, a whole half pound of wonderful-tasting pasteurized processed cheese. You'll want to keep several of these handy square packages in your refrigerator always for delicious cheese snacks and sandwiches you can fix in a jiffy. Just be sure you see the name Kraft Deluxe Slices on the packages you buy. Remember, the name Kraft is your guarantee of finest quality. Well, Leroy was so happy about being promoted in school this year, he bought his teacher a nice gift and was going to present it in appreciation. Then he got cold feet and left it on her doorstep. Miss Tuttle assumed it was a gift from the great Gildersleeve. Now she's having over for dinner. There he is getting out of his car. Now, let's see. Is everything in order? Um, flowers on the piano. Uh, I dusted the chandelier. Oh, and I'll leave the kitchen door slightly open so he can smell the fried chicken. I could turn off some of these bright lights. Oh, no, I'd just die if he thought I had an ulterior motive. What's so ulterior about a girl wanting to get married? There, that's much cozier. Oh, I wonder if I should have put on so much lipstick. Oh, well, if you're going hunting, load the gun. (laughs) Hello, Grace. Throckmorton, come in. Let me take your hat. Thank you. Here, Grace, something for you. Oh, flowers. How nice. Hollyhocks. The biggest flower I could find. <laughs> yes, they are rather overpowering, aren't they? Well, they didn't cost any more than the violets, so what the heck. <laughs> oh, sit down in this easy chair, Throckmorton, and here's an ashtray. Say, some of my favorite cigars. Very thoughtful of you, Grace. Oh, it was fun doing it. I got them down at the corner. Oh? Well, I hope the man doesn't think one of our pretty school teachers is smoking cigars. Oh, well, I I don't plan to teach school forever. <laughs> Grace, is that fried chicken I smell? Mm-hmm. My favorite dish. Mm-hmm. Well, you know what they say about the way to a man's heart. <laughs> I, I think I'll arrange these hollyhocks on the mantel for now. Yeah, they look nice up there. Sort of like a wedding. Yes, I I was thinking the same thing. Perhaps we're kindred spirits. Yeah. Really, Throckmorton, we are quite compatible. Well, we both like fried chicken. (laughs) Oh, be serious for a moment. Our tastes are very much alike. Now, take the traveling case, for instance. It's the very one I'd have picked myself. The traveling case? And I like a man who can make a beautiful gesture and not seek credit for it. What man? Well, you, when you left the traveling case at my door. Yeah, I did? Oh, yes. <laughs> well. Now, uh, if you'll excuse me, I'll, I'll go see about dinner. Yes, indeed. Go right ahead. Yeah, I don't know who gave her the traveling case, but if she wants to give me the credit, what can I lose? <laughs> Never look a gift horse in the mouth, they say. <laughs> Especially a pretty filly like Grace. <laughs> you know, she's humming in the kitchen. Right, George, she's in a gay mood. She's never been so nice to me. Throckmorton. Yes, Grace? Come to dinner, dear. Dear? Hey, no. (laughs) Coming! It's taken a long time, but she's calling me dear. Right, George Gildersleeve, you're dynamite. (laughs) (laughs) You just have a delayed fuse. <laughs> hello, Peavy. Yeah, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. What can I do for you this morning? Yeah, give me a cup of coffee, Peavy. I lost a lot of sleep last night. You doing, Jane? You bet. I take it you enjoyed the evening with Miss Tuttle. Well, let's just say she enjoyed the evening with me. My, my. Here's your coffee. Drink it. Yeah, thanks. Peavy, I never saw such a change in a girl. 
The other evening, Grace wouldn't even sit in the park and listen to the frogs with me. And last night, she had me over for fried chicken. <laughs> you sure it wasn't frog legs? <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right, Peavy. It was a beautiful dinner. Good food, low lights, soft music, all for me. Yeah, I just have a way with the ladies, I guess. Mr. Jollysleeve, I hate to disillusion you. What? Right. But the chances are Miss Tuttle isn't as fascinated with you as she is tired of teaching school. Oh, come now, Peavy. Teaching is a trying profession, and I have reason to suspect Miss Tuttle just thinks she wants a change. Well, what does that have to do with me? Well, you know what they say, any port in a storm. Oh. <laughs> so she's decided to sail through life with the water commissioner on his reservoir. I just... <laughs> I... Peavy! Are you saying she wants to get married? I can't make it any plainer. Peavy, why would Grace want to marry me? Like I say, she's desperate. <laughs> well, Grace is a wonderful girl. But marriage is another thing. I'm here to tell you, you're looking at a 30-year man. <laughs> Come to think about it, Peavy. All this started with that traveling case she thought I gave her. And last night, she kept talking about wanting to take it on a trip. Perhaps she was hinting at a honeymoon. Uh-oh. I can just see you tagging along, carrying the traveling case. Ta 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 da Ta 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 da Peavy, there isn't going to be a wedding. <laughs> you better speak now or forever hold your peace. <laughs> He's taken all the anticipation out of seeing Grace Tuttle again. Now I can see why she's being so kind to me. That you, Miss Gilkey? Yes, Bertie. I thought that was you. Yeah, it's me. Miss Gilkey, you look worried. Oh, I am worried. Bertie, how do you let a nice girl know you don't want to get married? Join the Foreign Legion and send a cable. <laughs> <laughs> now, Bertie. Hi, huh? Hello, Leroy. Uh, Bertie. Perhaps we'd better drop the subject. Yes, sir. What's the subject? Leroy, this doesn't concern you. Who does it concern? Leroy, it's your uncle's problem. Yeah? What's the problem? It isn't exactly a problem. Well, then why don't you drop the subject? <laughs> That's what I'm trying to do. Good. Now we can take up my problem. Your problem? How about 50 cents for the movies, Unc? Leroy, you have money. Ah! <laughs> what about your savings? My savings? Yeah, how much have you? Well, uh... Don't change the subject. How about 50 cents? Leroy, what happened to your nest egg? It hatched and flew away. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I'm waiting for an explanation. Well... Go get your savings and let's have an accounting. Gosh. You better come clean with your Uncle Leroy. Well, there was something I had to buy. Well, why didn't you tell me? I was afraid you'd think I was spending too much money. Leroy, you know I'm tolerant. Now, tell me what you spent it for, or I'll cut off your allowance. Oh, grown. You'll never learn the value of a dollar. What did you spend it for? Well, I bought something for my teacher. Miss Tuttle? Yeah. Leroy met well, Mr. Gilsleeve. Oh, sure. What did you buy? Don't get too upset with him. Bertie, what did you buy, Leroy? Well, I felt so good about passing, I bought her a traveling case. A yeah, traveling case. You, you bought the traveling case? Yeah. Sorry, Unc. What are you sorry about? You're a fine boy. I am. Yeah, this will prove I'm innocent. Why, George Bertie, here's a boy who knows how to handle his money. Yes, sir. But, Leroy, why didn't you let Miss Tuttle know the gift was from you? Oh, gosh, I didn't want her fussing over me, I guess. Yeah, believe me, it's better that she fuss over you than over me. <laughs> We're going over to Miss Tuttle's. What a character. <laughs> Forget the traveling case. My boy, you have to take credit for these things. In fact, I insist that you take the credit. Gosh. Why, Throckmorton. Hello, Grace. And Leroy. Hi. Won't you come in? Yeah, thank you. Grace, we came over to clear up a little mystery. What mystery? Well, I guess we've had enough fun about the traveling case. <laughs> I didn't give it to you. You told her you gave it to her? Oh, brother. <laughs> 
Well, not exactly, Leroy. Throckmorton, were you leading me on? Well, it's a question of who was leading who. Yeah, I mean... Yeah, I'll admit, I, I let you think I gave it to you. Yeah, I know you think I'm terrible. <laughs> oh, I don't think you're so terrible. Now, who did give me the traveling case? Leroy, don't hide your light under a bushel. Leroy, d- did you leave that wonderful gift at my door? Well, yeah. <laughs> that was a very expensive gift. You shouldn't have done it. I just wanted to show my appreciation. You're an all right teacher. And you're a very sweet boy. Ah. Right. This is the nicest thing that ever happened to me. You know, there was a time not so long ago that I thought I wanted to give up teaching. Yeah? I I guess I was just a little tired. Well, I gotta be on my way. See you now, Miss Tuttle. Leroy. Yeah? Before you go, I want to give you a big hug and kiss. No, for corn's sake! The Great Gildersleeve will be with us again in just 30 seconds. You can get one, two, three, four, five delicious kinds of Kraft Deluxe Slices for the most wonderful variety of easy-to-fix cheese sandwiches you've ever enjoyed. Get these perfect slices of fine-tasting pasteurized processed cheese in mellow Kraft American, Kraft American with bits of scarlet pimento added, nut-sweet Kraft Swiss, Kraft Brick with that deep, rich goodness, and sharp old English brand. Try all five wonderful kinds of Kraft Deluxe Slices tomorrow. Well, this is Gildersleeve again. As you see, school is out in Summerfield, as it probably is by now in your community. And this is a good time to thank our teachers for the job they're doing. After all, our teachers give the best years of their lives to our children... And they wouldn't have it any other way. Because they've discovered there's no more satisfying work in the world than teaching. And by the way, if you're a young man or a young woman about to decide on a career, why not give serious thought to teaching? You'll take pride in starting a child on a useful, productive life. Perhaps the greatest need today is for more education. Remember, better schools build a stronger America. See you next week. Good night, folks. The Great Gildersleeve is played by Willard Waterman. The show is written by John Elliott and Andy White and is partially transcribed. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley, Lillian Randolph, Mary Shipp, Stuffy Singer, and Dick Legrand. Musical compositions by Jack Meekin. This is John Heaston saying good night for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. Be sure to listen in next week and every week throughout the summer for the further adventures of The Great Gildersleeve. Calling all sandwich makers. Be on the lookout for miracle sandwich spread when you're shopping. Take a jar home and discover what a delicious, different flavor this wonderful spread gives your sandwiches. Miracle sandwich spread is made by Kraft from America's favorite salad dressing, Miracle Whip, and spicy relishes. Use it along with the meat or cheese sandwich filling you like best, or for the quickest, easiest, thriftiest sandwich you could want, use it alone between slices of bread. Get it tomorrow. Miracle Sandwich Spread. Tonight, enjoy 